For these commands are a lamp, this teaching is a light, and the corrections of discipline are the way to life. Hello, everyone. This is Monica Dennington. Welcome to your Sunday morning service. We're broadcasting to you live from the desert of Phoenix, Arizona, as we come together to have church in the end times. Today's message is principle number seven in the series on end times discernment, and it is called Know the Price of Oil. This is a great end times message that you're going to want to share with your family and friends, and you're going to get that message at monicadennington.com. That's also where you're going to use your three buttons in order to have church with us this morning, the prayer button, the donate button, and the decision button. Use that prayer button all week long. Also, um, those of you who are watching on YouTube or on the blog, feel free to leave prayer requests in the comments if you prefer. Um, We will get them that way as well. We'll pray for them as soon as we get them as well as uh, often live on the air. Uh, The donate button is where you give your tithes and offerings. If this is a place you're getting your teaching, this is an appropriate place to give your offerings to the Lord. We want to give generously as the scriptures tell us. Um, If you give a tithe, that's fine. Uh, But whatever um, the Spirit leads you to do, I encourage you to do it with a generous heart this morning and to really search and say, you know, Lord, what do you want me to give this morning? Because this is the way that we show our trust in God and the fact that we are investing the things that are important to us us in this world in uh, God's heavenly kingdom that he is establishing here on this earth. So this is also going to help us, of course, to reach more people with the message, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So it's the body of Christ working together as well. So I encourage you to have church with us by hitting that donate button today. And then the decision button is what I want you to hit whenever God's word speaks to you, convicts you that you need to make a change in your life. You need to make a decision, either a change of attitude, repenting of a sin, or going in a different direction direction. I want to hear from you. I want to know your name and I want to be able to pray for you as well. So hit that decision button and let me know this morning. We have a few prayer requests this morning um, and uh, some of them are um, kind of serious. So I want you to join me in prayer um, for our brothers and sisters and just know that the promise that we have is that God is listening. God is listening to us. He promised us that we have an audience with him, even though we're sinners you know, through the blood of Christ, we can go boldly before that throne of grace. And he said that he will hear our requests and everything that we ask according to his will, he will do it, especially when two or three of us come together and we agree on anything in his name. So that's what we're going to do this morning with all confidence that our God who hears us, our God who sees us is going to keep his promise to us and he is going to move on our behalf. So first of all, I want to pray for my dear Aubrey. I love you uh, very much and I um, want to pray for her um, because she is in, uh, was in a car wreck this week. She's also pregnant and has been having some concerns about the baby. So they're checking on the baby periodically. So we want to pray uh, for Aubrey right now. Father in heaven, I just want to lift Aubrey up to you right now, and I thank you for her fiery spirit, Lord God, and, you know, the fact that she has a heart to seek after you, and she's been through a lot in her life. She knows what pain is, Lord God, uh, but she also knows who you are, and she wants to know you, so I pray for protection over Aubrey. I thank you for protecting her when she was in that car wreck this week, and I pray that there would be no damage from that either to her or to her baby, and all these concerns about the baby, Lord God, I just pray that you would alleviate those in the name of Jesus. I pray that the next time she goes in to check on that baby, that they would find that everything's working the way that it's supposed to. And if there's anything that's not developing or working correctly, we speak life into Aubrey's baby right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we place our hands um, on her womb in the spirit. And we ask you to bridge that gap in Jesus to place your nail scarred hands on her womb and that you would touch that baby and um, just breathe life into that child. We pray that the baby would grow up to be strong and healthy and to develop just the way that you designed it to. And I thank you so much that you love Aubrey and this baby so much. I just pray for continual um, protection over both of them and over Aubrey's soul. Just uh, surround her with the Holy Spirit and with the love of God. I pray that you would just surround her with love this week throughout her whole pregnancy 
mercy and that you would set her on solid ground, Lord God, so that she would know that you are establishing her. And in spite of everything that she's been through and the heartache that she's experienced in her life, that you are coming in to trade those ashes and, uh, and to exchange them um, for uh, for beauty instead, and um, that her time of mourning, Lord God, um, as she has known in the past, that is going to give way to praise and thanksgiving and joy in the morning. So I thank you so much, Lord God, for her, for her beautiful spirit for your love for her and for your protection. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We love you, Aubrey. Um, We want to pray right now um, for all of the pastors that are going to be speaking today and tomorrow here in Phoenix um, for the Southern Baptist uh, Convention Pastors Conference this year. I've already done a video um, praying for uh, the speakers, but I did um, leave three of those speakers off of that uh, video. Um, so I want to go ahead and pray for them by name. Also, one of the pastors, um, Shane Hall, is having um, has had some difficulty um, in this past year. He's been dealing with cancer, and so there's been a request that we pray for that. Um, so we are going to do so right now. Father in heaven, I lift up to you Spencer Plumley and Ryan Rice Sr. and Nathan Rose, Lord God. Um, all of the pastors that I've already prayed for, by name and um, these three in particular this morning, I just pray that you would speak to their souls, Lord God. There are changes that need to be made. We can preach to the choir all day long, but I am sure that these men are not interested in just getting a name for themselves or getting a little bit of recognition. They are hardworking pastors of, of small churches, and um, they, uh, I'm sure they want to do your will, Lord God, and they want to inspire hearts to the changes that you want to make in the Southern Baptist Convention, Lord God. These are deep heart changes that have to happen. These are um, these are generational uh, blind spots and sins that you want to overcome through your spirit. And this is going to happen through the power of your word. I pray that you would use these men today, Lord God, and tomorrow in a mighty powerful way to speak your word so that it will um, that it will cut right through to the hearts of the people that are listening, Lord God, and make those necessary changes, Lord God. I pray for Spencer Plumley a special blessing. Let your face shine upon him, Lord God, as he speaks your word. I pray for Ryan Rice Sr. that you would put a guard over his mouth, that nothing would come out of his mouth except for the written word. I pray that you would just inspire him and let that written word flow. And even as he's he's getting ready to say his next phrase, let the Holy Spirit place those scriptures right on the tip of his tongue, Lord God. Let it just flow like living waters in Jesus' name. And I pray for Nathan Rose, Lord God, that you would let him speak powerfully from your heart heart to glorify Jesus Christ straight from your heart through the Spirit of God and the Spirit of wisdom. Thank you, Lord God. We love you and we know that you love your people and we know that you are judging your house and it is a hard time when that fire has come and the shaking has come. But you love your people and you will continue to love them And it is an act of love for you to continue to speak your word to us. Speak the word that convicts us of the sin that is killing us and tearing us apart. And do it through these men, these three men and the rest of the men who are going to be preaching at the SBC Pastors Conference this week. Thank you so much, Lord. Also, we want to lift up to you, Shane, as it has been requested. um, Shane Hall um, needs prayer for healing for cancer. And um, we want to pray that the Lord would give him health and strength he needs for the conference. And then that you would do a miracle um, of healing in his body, Lord God. So we all agree right now, Lord. We lift our voices and we lift up Shane Hall to you, Lord God. And I ask right now that you would place your hands on Shane. I pray that you would speak to his body and we speak life into his body in the name of Jesus by faith in the promise that we have that we can ask anything in your name and we will receive it. Lord God, give Shane Hall life. Let his body thrive. Let cancer die. 
Let it be choked out. Let it have no place to go. Let there be no provision made for it in his body. Let it not prosper. Let it not continue to grow. But instead, let it shrink and disappear. And I pray that any damage that has been done will be healed miraculously and instantaneously, Lord God. I pray for a miracle. And I pray for strength and encouragement for Shane and his family, Lord God, that they would know that you have purpose for him. And just as he is doing right now, that nothing can stop him from doing what you have appointed him to do in this hour. And in this hour, that is to preach your word. I pray that you would purify his tongue of every word except for those that have proceeded from your mouth as recorded in the text of the written word of God. I pray that you would make his preaching powerful and effective to tear down strongholds and to build up and equip the saints. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much for praying with me um, for, uh, for the pastors there. And um, we, uh, we do ask for a blessing on um, the entire Southern Baptist family um, as uh, all of the family of God is going through this judgment time. It's very difficult. Um, people are falling away from church. Uh, fewer people are committing their life to ministry. Um, missions are down. Uh, baptisms are down. Uh, but it is prophesied that there will be a death in the body of Christ, that the kingdom of God will be like 10 virgins and they will fall asleep. That's uh, what our message this morning is about. No, the price of oil. It's about the 10 virgins. And it's a difficult time when Jesus would say someone fell asleep. It usually meant that they died. And then when they would wake up, they were being raised from the dead. When he said that they would wake up, this is going to be a mighty resurrection, but it's hard because first we have to go through this great falling away that was also prophesied by Jesus to happen in the last generation. We are seeing it. It's happening. And those of you who are not really tuned into the fact that um, we are living in the end times, we are living in the last generation, it, it is time to open your eyes. And um, if you're part of the, the Southern Baptist, you're going to hear those numbers about um, how many um, people have, have fallen away and how many people are not coming back to church and um, how few baptisms there are and all of these things that do indicate a kind of death. And it is very hard to see. With that also is dying the culture of our old church systems, which includes a lot of beautiful things, just like the temple of God inc included a lot of beautiful things and a lot of things that were originally holy. But Jesus determined and, um, and spoke the word of judgment that it was to be torn down stone by stone. And you have to understand that the people that were there, to the people that were there, that was a tragedy. They were losing history. They were lo losing tradition, their songs, the, the things that brought them together. And we are experiencing that right now in, in all of these denominations. We are experiencing that and we're saying, what's going to happen, you know, when nobody remembers these old hymns? What's going to happen when nobody remembers what it means to even go to church or, um, you know, to read your Bible, to have a devotional time, to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? But what we can rest assured of is that the death was prophesied. God wasn't surprised by this. The apostasy was prophesied. Jesus said, see, I told you beforehand. And why? Because he said, I don't want you to get discouraged and weighed down with uh, disillusionment and dissipation. He said, I told you beforehand. So be on guard and know that we have to guard our hearts with hope and with faith. We have to remember that the same one that told us that of the death that was coming is also telling us that there is a hope and a resurrection and a plan. God is making a living house. He is going to make something happen on the earth that we could not imagine unity in the body of Christ when the spirit of Christ is poured out. And so we have a lot to look forward to, even as we see a lot of precious things falling down around us. We have a lot to look forward to. So um, we have one last uh, prayer request from Facebook. And I'm so sorry to hear this. Um, Sam um, and uh, Latasha. Um, Sam said, my wife, Latasha, lost her battle this morning and went home to be with the Lord. She was a very strong woman and a good mother and wife. 
prayers, please. So we want to pray for Sam and, um, and for Latasha's children right now. Father in heaven, there is some pain that no words can do justice to, and the loss of a wife and the loss of a mother in such a young family, a relatively young family, it's one of those pains, Lord God. So all we can say is be with this family as they grieve, Lord God. And we grieve with them in, in the small way that we can from where we are. We are saddened by this news, and Lord God, there's nothing to say to make it better, but your presence is what this family needs, your word, your love. And I pray that you will pour out your love on this family like a healing balm to bind them together, to hold them together, just like, you know, you bind up a wound while it's healing, Lord God. It's a big, open, gaping wound. And it's going to take a long time to heal. So I pray that you would bind it up by surrounding them with your love through good people who are full of your spirit who will come in, who will come in and, and wrap their arms around this family and take care of their needs, Lord God, all different kinds of needs. And I pray that you would also guard them, Lord God, in this vulnerable time. And it's going to be vulnerable as long as these kids are kids because all kids need their mom. So I pray for protection from the evil one who would come in and try to weasel his way in and use this vulnerability as an opportunity to come in and introduce himself into their lives. I pray that you would stop him at the door, that you would be the gate, that you would be the shepherd, that you would knock those wolves away, those evil spirits, those evil ideas, those things that would separate those kids from you. Mark them for you. Set them apart for you, Lord God, and let them walk with you always, even through the valley of the shadow of death, Lord God. I pray that they would walk through it with you, and because they know that you are their shepherd, that they would fear no evil because they know that your rod is there to comfort them and your staff is going to guide them. You are going to beat those wolves off and you are going to lead them and guide them to a place that is much more beautiful, to a place where they can feel again, to a place where they can feel hope and joy and peace and have purpose, Lord God. So get them through this blinding rain. Sam and these beautiful kids, Just get them through it, Jesus. Take the wheel. Get them through it. Wrap your wings around them, Lord God. And surround them with your love, comfort, and peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let us all praise God today for everything that we have. Even when we are going through tragedy, the relationships that we still have, Let's treasure them because every day that we have is a gift from the Lord. And every day there are so many things that come in to discourage us. But the Lord wants us to remember that there are also so many good gifts. He wants us to see this world through his eyes. So let's start giving our time and our attention to God, a little bit of time to God's word every day so that we can see through that lens so that that lamp can light our way and we can see where we're going in the light of the promises of God's word. That results in hope and it gives you a reason for getting up in the morning. So let's all remember to do that this week. Our scripture reading today is going to go along with the message. It is Joel chapter 2 verses 28 to 32. You may stand for the reading of the word. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And that 
everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there will be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the survivors whom the Lord calls. If you would like to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ today, or if you feel that you have fallen away from that relationship and you want to renew that commitment today, I encourage you to say this prayer with me right now. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross so that if I believe in him, I can be saved and that through what he went through, my sins can be forgiven. I believe he took my punishment. I believe that his stripes are for my healing. And I thank you for that sacrifice that you would love me so much. Please forgive me of my sins. I repent. I turn away and I make a pledge right now that I'm going to keep a good conscience before you. When I stumble and fall, I will run straight back into the light. I will not hide in the darkness where I can fool myself and just thinking that I'm okay. I will run straight back to you, even though I can see that I'm not perfect. I still want to be with you. I want to dwell in the light where Jesus is. And I have faith that you will clean me up, that you are faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I thank you, Lord God. I place my trust in you and in your son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you said that prayer with me this morning, please do me a favor and go to monicadennington.com, hit the decision button, write to me, um, you know, use those buttons and, and I just, I want to hear from you. I want to know that you've made this decision. That's very important. It's a very important decision and, um, it's very important to me to be able to know your name and to be able to pray for you and just be, you know, that little, little part of your life. Um, it's very, um, it's, it's a very big privilege for me to, to know you and to be able to bring God's word to you at all. So, um, thanks for sharing your joy with me as well. Uh, without further ado, Um, You can go to monicadennington.com to get today's Sunday morning special, which is Know the Price of Oil. And until I see you next time, remember to read your Bible and do what it says. 